Hi, this is Robbie from Southern California. Yes, the one that is now feeding thousands of hummingbirds out our window. Plus, they're all over our gardens. Let me start off by saying, before we get into the fountains, because this is going to be on fountains, I started with one. Remember, they used to migrate most of these all the way down into Mexico and Central America. But as they started to find food here, they stayed. So we used to have like one hummingbird, went into two, and yes, we have thousands now. And we feed them here all year long, with the Annas being the most popular staying here, or I should say the most common one. They nest here all through spring and summer, and sometimes a little bit into fall. I've even had them nest still winter before it even hit spring. Today, let's talk about fountains because so many of us are making fountains. Fountains are the most fun thing to create. We can do it as a DIY at home and it'll be practically for free. All you'll need is a solar fountain kit. Now, the ball you're going to be seeing throughout this video, though right now it is on electricity, let me tell you something, it broke a while back and I did have it on solar. So you can get fountains from the store if you don't want to make one look at it, analyze it, and see if you can get to the pump. And if you can swap it out, you can put a solar pump on it. Make sure if you're getting a small solar type kit that the lift isn't too high because some of the small ones, especially the ones I use and will show here, those don't have that much of a lift. The pump is small, so it's not gonna go up more than a couple feet. Sometimes you can force it to three. So keep that in mind. Now, what you want to do is analyze these beautiful little gems. Just analyze, look at them and see how tiny they are. Think about how they do not swim. They're not swimming birds. And what they're looking for is something that's on the flat side, something they can grip to, so they have to be able to grip, and something they could just get that water running throughout their little body, around their beak, their face, because they're dirty. They get really dirty. They go around and they're collecting nectar and pollen and pollen just gets all over them. It looks like dust. It could be white all over them. It could be yellow as well. And then nectar is sticky. Not just the stuff we're feeding them, which is a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water mixed well and just put about, you know, a little bit out at a time if you're only dealing with one or two hummingbirds. And just a hint on that, get as many feeders as possible out and keep them spaced at least in the beginning so they can kind of take over their own feeder if they want and as their families build you'll be able to have a big community feeding out of the same feeder like us because remember one little hummingbird two little hummingbirds all it has to be is one female the babies are raised together and they're all a happy family going back to the fountains because that's what i want to stick with today we want something shallow something they can get to Though you can sit a cup in a bowl, they're not gonna go into the bowl. I've never had one drown, but go ahead and put rocks in it if you want. That's perfectly fine. They're gonna land on the top of something, something that they can have the water run over the front of their body. Hummingbirds don't walk. If you watch them, when they move from feeder to feeder, flower to flower, branch to branch, they don't walk. Their legs are really not built to walk like other birds can walk on the ground. They don't even hop. What they do is they hover up their little helicopters and hover down. I will say, we had a bird living here for a while and then it migrated out that did walk. It was the first hummingbird I had ever seen walk. And I got a few clips of it. He literally will walk around the peanut butter cup feeders I made. I've never seen that before walk to whatever he wanted to get to. He literally had the ability to move those legs sideways, which was very unique in itself. So you want to kind of think about what you want to make if you want to make your own bird bath. What do you want to do? Do you want to bring in just hummingbirds? Do you want to bring in other birds? Orioles, for example, they'll just use a plate. You put a plate outside on a deck or a patio or a fence and just fill it with water, they'll just come in and splash in a plate. Hummingbirds will do that too, but they really like the sound of water. They want to find that water, get in there and splash and scrub and clean. 
And that's why water is so important to them. Probably more important than a lot of other little birds because they need to clean that off. I mean, if they left all that stickiness on their beaks, they could end up with issues. Sometimes you see little things growing on the side because they didn't find some place to get that all off. They have to bathe all day. I mean, they feed in hundreds of flowers a day. They feed at feeders, which is really important for us to do. If you think about it, there's not as many flowers in a lot of areas as there used to be. We here have weed abatement in Southern California and all over California which means we're taking away a lot of the natural habitat as well as flowers that they would feed on. And remember, they don't eat just flowers. They eat small insects as well. So they're looking for flowers to feed out of pollen and nectar and then looking around for small insects. I do believe that if we didn't help feed them, their numbers would go way down. They can have three or four nests a year. The reason they have so many nests well, nature gave them the ability to do that because maybe only one or two will make it that year. But with us helping them, we can build their numbers up and it's going to be fine because they can move hundreds of miles in a day if they had to. And they can find flowers somewhere else. So if they don't find any food in your area, they're going to leave. Maybe they'll go to a park and live or someplace else. Let's hope the park isn't spraying anything to keep their plants nice. We don't want to spray. Our gardens are completely organic, spray-free, no insecticide, no weed killer, no nothing. That scares me all the time when I see people spraying their weeds because the hummingbird doesn't know, goes up to the beautiful weeds that are growing these gorgeous flowers. They feed and, well, they, they can get very sick from it. That's why it helps when we give them feeders because... It gives them the ability to find that extra food, to give them the boost to get out there and hunt for the flowers and the insects that they need. Going back to the DIY projects that I make here is I make so many solar fountains. I, I've got them all over the garden. I'm always making new ones and sometimes I even take apart an old one and make a new one all over. You can use all kinds of parts. Think of kids' toys. That's one of the best things to use. I had a globe, that child's globe that opened up some sort of like purse. Well, I split it in half and I made two of them out of that and the hummingbirds love that. They like anything that's up. That's why if you're going to make something, let's say you're going to make a, just a bowl with rocks, they will go to that, but generally they don't tend to take a bath when standing on top of a rock. I think they're not as stable, but they will do it. They will do it. They want something up. That's why I love the cups, water bottles, soda bottles, food containers, anything you can think of. Coffee containers, something that they can stand on top and the water goes underneath them. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for something shallow. I mean, think about it. Where do they go take a bath when we're not putting anything out? Well, in the morning, a lot of plants have dew on them, natural dew, just from the beautiful morning air with fresh water on the leaves. They'll take a bath in that. Now, can they really clean? Probably not that well, but I have seen them scooting around the leaves trying to take a bath. A lot of times you'll be out in your garden, you'll be hand watering, and they'll be just going through the leaves and washing and scrubbing because now you've got water falling down on the leaves and they have control of the amount of water they're going to be in. You'll see as they sit in the water, they do get wet, but their feathers are designed to make sure that the water rolls off. It's gotta roll off so they can wash it and scrub their feathers. But like our clothes would get saturated, they don't get saturated that much. They have to stay somewhat dry or they wouldn't be able to fly. I mean, think about it. They only weigh as much as one sheet of paper. Isn't that something? So we want to help them out is what it is. We want to give them their important things that they need. And what do they need? They need food. They need shelter, which would be the plants that you've got around. It could be small plants, big plants, trees, and water. And water is important for them to drink, but very important for them to bathe and keep themselves clean. And I think we can do a lot of that ourselves. We can really help them out. 
They're not real fond of bathing and doing anything with other birds. They'll try to chase them off. Sometimes they want the bath to themselves. Yes, you'll have multiple birds bathing if the hummingbirds are familiar with each other. Just like us people. Well, not that we're going to bathe with everybody, but you got the idea. Same thing with feeding. So we want to give them the opportunity to have a place to do that. And let me tell you something. Once you set something up in your yard and they become familiar with it and they love it, you're going to have them there all day. And keep in mind, if you're fortunate enough to have a female come in who absolutely loves the idea that you've got a place for her to hide, a place for her to get food, a place for her to take a bath, and she builds that nest, and that's where it starts. Because those babies are going to stay around mom. And mom is going to teach them where the feeder is, where the fountain is, where everything is for them to survive. Of course, some will take off and leave. If you're in an area where you get freeze and snow and all that, they're going to leave, but they'll come back. They'll come back because they are one of the smartest birds on earth. They're tiny, but their brain is big compared to their body. And they even know who is filling their feeders. They know who is cleaning those fountains. I usually clean the fountains once a week, but you know, if I look at them and they don't look that good, I'll tip them. My, I try to make all my fountains easy to just dump and fill or scrub. So you, you clean them as you need them. Running water, you know, that stays much cleaner. And it's also the design. I've got so many designs I'm starting to make now, and I think you'll appreciate it. So keep an eye out because I've got more coming. And you'll be able to pick out the ones that you like that I made, and then you can alter them to the way it will work for you. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And go ahead, feed the little guys and give them some place to drink and bathe. Bye-bye.